Welcome everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about one sample t-test and we are going to see how we can perform one sample t-test in our programming language. Now, before we can go ahead and dive in to do a t-test, first let us answer a question that when do we do a t-test? Now, while testing a hypothesis about a population parameter, we may come across two situations. The target population is either finite or it is infinite. Now if the target population in f is finite, in such a case the population mean and population, uh, population standard deviation are available. However, when the population is infinite, the population information such as population mean and population standard deviation, they are not available. Now, one of the basic hypothesis tests, one of the basic hypothesis tests is the test about population mean. Now this hypothesis age can be tested using mainly two statistic. One is the Z statistic and the second one is the T statistic. Now the Z statistic can be obtained only if the population standard deviation sigma is known. However, if the population standard deviation sigma is not known, we need to estimate sigma if unknown. and the estimate is given by sigma cap. Now replacing this sigma by sigma cap in Z statistic is what gives us the T statistic. So T statistic is used to test about the population mean if the sigma is unknown. So the statistical testing of hypothesis about a population mean when population standard deviation is unknown using the T statistic is called a T test. So this is what a t-test is. Uh, another information that I want to give is that this t-statistic uh, has a t-distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom where n is the sample size. Now let's come to the one sample t-test. This test includes only one sample which is assumed to be drawn from a normal population. So let us first start with the assumption of the t-test. The first assumption in the independence assumptions that the sample observation must be independent. The second is that in case the sample is skewed, the sample size should be at least 30 or larger. Now 
let's talk about the hypothesis. The hypothesis is that we want to test for the population mean h0 equals to mu equals to some null value and h1 equals to mu greater than or less than or not equal to the null value. So we can do, do the one-sided greater than or less than test or a two-sided not equal to test. So if the p-value is less than the chosen level of significance that is alpha then we reject the null hypothesis and we conclude that the data provide convinc convincing evidence for h1. Actually the data does not support uh, the uh, the data does not provide a convincing ev evidence to support for the null hypothesis. Uh, now let's talk about an example which we will be solving in R. Uh, the example is taken from the book of Applied Business Statistics, Ken Black. A hole punch machine is set to punch a hole 1.84 centimeters in diameter in a strip of sheet metals in a manufacturing process. The strip of metal is then, uh, is then creased and sent to the next phase of production where a metal rod is slipped through the hole. It is important that the hole be punched to the specified diameter of 1.84 cm. To test punching accuracy, technicians have randomly sampled 12 punched holes and measured the diameters. The data in centimeter follows. Use an alpha of 0 0.10 to determine whether the holes are being punched an average of 1.84 cm. And assume that the punched holes are normally distributed in the population. So in this problem we have to test the hypothesis that H0 such that the mu is equal to 1.84 cm against H1 such that mu is not equal to 1.84 centimeter at 10 percent level of significance. That is for alpha equals to 0 0.10. Uh, so now let us let us take this problem to the R studio. I have already recorded the measure over here and in a vector and named these measures. Let's run it. Now let us check the distribution of this distribution of the data using a box plot. And we can see that the data is pretty symmetrically distributed as it, uh, as it is suggested by the box plot. Now let us perform the t-test and test the hypothesis that H0 says that mu is equal to 1.84 centimeter against H1 says that mu is not equal to 1.84 centimeter. Now we can do a t-test in R using t.test function and the first argument that it takes is the name of the data which is measures. Then we specify the null hypothesis that it's mu equals to 1.84 and next we specify the alternate hypothesis uh, so that we can say it one tail, two tailed, and he, in this case we are typing two sided. And let's specify confidence is equal to 0 0.90 since if you remember our alpha was actually 0 0.1. Now let us run this code and the t-test is done and we get the output for the one sample t-test. See here we get the t-value of 1.5947 a degrees of freedom of 11. The p-value came to be 0 .0, 0 0.1391. Here is the alternate hypothesis as we specified that the true mean is not equal to 1.84 we also got the 90% confidence interval 
which is from 1.8386 to 1.8630. We have also got the sample estimate of the mean which is 1.8508. Now let's concentrate on this p-value. The p-value is 0 0.1391 which is greater than the uh, chosen level of significance alpha. So based on this we can conclude that the data provides convincing evidence that the null hypothesis is true. And so we will accept our null hypothesis and reject the alternate claim. Okay, okay here now I'm going to show you some of the variations of this code. Now in the alternate hypothesis we can specify greater or less in so uh, for doing a one-sided t-test uh, specify less that will check that that whether the h h naught is equal to 1.84 or sorry the mu is equal to 1.84 or mu is less than 1.84 so we can also change the confidence to 0 0.95 for a 95 percent confidence and taking therefore taking alpha equals to 0 0.05 that is at 5 percent level of significance as if we run the code we get the alternate hypothesis to be the true mean is less than 1.84 uh, we get everything the 95 percent confidence interval the p-value the p-value came out to be 0 0.9305 which is much greater than 0 0.05 and therefore we accept the null. So if, if you do not specify the confidence uh, by default it's going to take 0 0.95. Uh, similarly we can trace for greater by changing this less to greater and that will be all. So this is how we can perform one sample t-test in the R programming language. In the coming videos uh, I, I'm going to discuss about discuss more about the t-test we are going to talk about the two sample independent t-test and the pair t-test and in the coming more videos I am also going to talk uh, about the non-parametric equivalent of the t-tests so keep watching have a nice time thank you